Our film starts with a girl bringing a drunk guy named Jake back to her place. She tells him she wants to know nothing about him, takes him inside, and ties him up. Another woman shows up, which for some reason he gets freaked out about. They fang out and bite him. After a montage of the girls stripping, a blonde shows up and fangs out as well, announcing dinner. Dinner. After the opening credits, we're introduced to a place called Dunwich University. After painfully long scenes of a brunette walking around campus, she finally gets to her dorm room where she meets her roommate, Melissa. Tracy, the brunette, introduces herself twice, and then they have a pretty dull conversation where we find out that Tracy is a smart journalism major who graduated high school early, and Melissa is a rich chick who went to college just to meet boys. We then get a matter-of-fact conversation where Melissa's last roommate disappeared without a trace, followed by her introducing Tracy to a guy named Roy, or Floyd, not sure as they seem to not have their mics on for the introduction, but anyway, he invites the girls to a party and Melissa happily accepts. We sit through a bunch of meaningless school stuff, but when they leave class, we see that the vampires from earlier are in the class. Tracy and Melissa then have a conversation outside where Melissa tells her they are a secretive sorority with only three members and suggested that they should pledge. After some skippable scenes of a guy hitting on Tracy and her being too dense to understand how to talk to boys, we get an attractive woman walking by herself in a parking garage, being followed by the most vampire looking member of the vampire sorority. Some douchey guy shows up and volunteers to give her a ride because she lost her keys, but before she can get in the car, the vampire takes her. When the guy gets out to look, the vampire shows up behind him and knocks him out. Back at the sorority, we see the girl Cindy gagged and tied up while the other three argue about how long they can stick around before anyone starts to notice. We find out the blonde's name is Eliza and she's the leader. The gothic looking one is Rose and the cute one is Brandy. Eliza orders them to stay. Rose kind of snarls at Eliza, takes off the tape from Cindy's mouth for whatever reason, and bites her along with Rose while Cindy screams. That is until it evolves into another strip show, but this time with Cindy doing the stripping. So, noticing a trend that if someone gets bit, there must be boobs. Anyway, we then see Tracy walking at night, and she sees Rose throw away something. She goes through her trash and sees a bloody sheet. She runs off and tries to tell Melissa, who then tells her she probably had her period, and Tracy's weird for thinking murderer. Back in class, Brandy is giving looks to Tracy, while we also get gratuitous posing and fang outs. The guy from earlier tries to hit on Tracy again, but Eliza runs him off and invites Tracy to join the sorority. Tracy says no deal unless Melissa is invited, to which Eliza agrees. Back at the sorority, the douchey guy comes to the kitchen bloody and coughing. The kitchen is pretty clean outside of the spirit Halloween cobwebs. Douchey guy goes to leave, but the sun hurts him. Tracy and Rose then talk about how they only drank enough to make the sun hurt him. Rose then goes to the kitchen and roughs him up before she goes back and they have a conversation about not liking Tracy being added to the sorority. Rose suggests leaving Eliza, but Brandy refuses to join her. We didn't see Rose finish off the guy. <laughs> Tracy and the guy that's been hitting on her finally have a drinking date where the guy tells her how his friend used to date Rose and then disappears so he thinks they're creepy. He then tells her she should join the sorority because all serial killers are white males before they start making out. By the way, if this sounds awkward, no matter what you think, it's worse. Tracy eventually leaves after apologizing for kissing the guy. Back at the dorm, Melissa and some other dude, Kent or something, were about to get it on, but Tracy comes in, so she boots him out. Tracy tells Melissa about their sorority invite, and they go to the party they were invited to earlier to celebrate. We see that the sorority girls are also at the party. Rose takes Kent back to the sorority house, and Tracy follows. She then witnesses Rose and Brandy feet on him, so she pans and goes to tell the guy she ran off on earlier what she saw. The guy, Colin, doesn't believe her and tells her he made up the story about the friend dating Rose and disappearing. She calls him an asshole and storms off. Again. Tracy then goes and gets a police officer, who apparently only asks her why he's following her when they get to the house and not, you know, before. He knocks on the door, and Kent opens the door, looking very pale, with Rose answering all the officer's questions. When they get back in the house, Rose and Brandy feed on Kent while the officer yells at Tracy for wasting his time. Tracy then tells Melissa they're still going to the sorority rush, but to follow her lead in case something happens. Meanwhile, Rose nags Eliza about why she wants more members. 
Eliza then gives a sob story about how her maker abandoned her. Back in the dorm room, Rose shows up and pulls the film out of Tracy's camera. She then warns Tracy about Eliza. Rose gives her the backstory that she was accidentally turned by Eliza and is stuck because of the blood addiction and that she needs to talk to basically the only professor in the school. Rose then disappears and we go back to the awkward storyline between Tracy and Colin as he shows up to beg for her forgiveness and watches her get dressed and then they make out. Tracy and Melissa eventually arrive at the sorority house. They do a ritual thing, but without Rose, who is missing. They tell the two they have to drink blood, which they both do. I'm guessing the blood was spiked because some real acid trippy vampire stuff starts happening. The girls then flip out and leave once they see Eliza feeding on uh, a lost as to which random guy this was. They eventually get back to the dorm and pass out. The next day, Tracy wakes up and tells Melissa that they're dead. Not too dead, though, because they go out walking in the park to talk about it. Melissa, during their walk, complains of extreme thirst, but Tracy tells her to fight it. We then skip to a parking garage where a guy named Ryan tells Tracy to make up with Colin after a fight we totally didn't see. After he leaves, Rose shows up, shriveled up with a stake through her heart, and dies. She then calls Colin to tell him about the vampires, which Colin gets angry about and runs off. Maybe this was the fight and the other guy was clairvoyant or something? Anyway, he goes back to his dorm room and sulks, but then there's a knock on the door and it's Melissa who tells Colin to follow her. She takes him back to the sorority house, setting him up for an ambush where he is supposed to be her first victim. Eliza manhandles Colin and bites him, then tells Melissa to drink. She eventually does, then they all drink together. <laughs> Tracy then shows up and talks to Melissa. She's kind of fine with it until she finds out that it was Colin. She then goes back to Colin's dorm room to see if he's there, which of course he wasn't being dead at all. She then goes to the professor's office. We absolutely get no new information out of this scene, but it does end with her buying a vampire book off of him and he's basically like a guidance counselor for vampires. She's then told if she kills Eliza, she can go back to normal, which pretty much negates the book's purchase. We get an exciting scene of Tracy reading, followed by Melissa then confronting Tracy. Tracy tries to tell her that vampires don't have to kill to survive. They fight over the stake that Tracy was carving and it accidentally goes through Melissa's chest. She makes a weird noise and dies and then Tracy tells her that they were blood sisters. Back at the sorority, Randy tells Eliza she thinks Melissa is dead. She then outs Eliza as the one who killed Rose. Eliza goes downstairs to sleep and Tracy goes to the sorority and tells Brandy that Melissa is dead and frames the professor for it. Brandy then spills her guts about everything she knows about the vampire sorority, and only after telling her everything does she decide she needs to talk to Eliza. Tracy stakes her, followed by another awkward death scene. The professor then shows up and tells Tracy to get up because she still has to kill Eliza. He lets her know that vampires can't kill other vampires, so that's why she needs to do it. Basically, they broke vampire rules by killing people, and that's why vampires don't like the sorority. Tracy gets up, takes the stake out of Brandy, and they head to the garage where Brandy is sleeping on a table with a sheet on it. Eliza wakes up at the last second and stops her before biting Tracy on the wrist. No! No! They have a pretty weak fight before Tracy stakes Eliza, who then turns into a puppet with a wig on. Tracy and the professor then tear the puppet up. They go outside, and then Tracy tells us that she's still a vampire in spite of Eliza dying. The film ends with the professor telling her that she'll be invited to the Vampire Secret Society and shown how to survive as a vampire without killing.